said earlier, it is a privilege to be here. Amen. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. Amen. I love that song. Amen. And it fits perfectly with, with my sermon today. Amen. Because uh, without Jesus, in John 15, 5, it says, without Jesus, we can do nothing without Jesus. My too low? Yeah, I can't hear it. I can't hear it. <coughs> about now. Say a few oh, more man. things. Right. Oh, here he turned it on. It was. Turn away from your hand. Oh, it's on you. No wonder. There you go. It's not all over. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. Amen. Come to our, let's go to our scripture verse. battle always and we will always have this battle 
until we're glorified, until Jesus comes back in the clouds to bring us home and he gives us these new bodies and we won't have this carnal nature anymore. But until then, we have to deal with it. And the name of the sermon, God's... Well, I, 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 want, I, want, I want to paraphrase uh, a little bit instead of going right directly to the sermon. Now, Peter is in the upper room with Jesus and, and the rest of the disciples. And, and they're talking about how, you know, they're, they're arguing about who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. And Jesus says, well, tonight, every one of you is going to deny me. And, and he, he said, all of them are going to deny me. And Peter says, though everybody denies you, I, I'm not going to deny you. I am going to stand by you, Lord. But Peter was talking out of his, uh, he would, he, it was his carnal nature doing the talking. This, this is old covenant thinking. We, we make promises to God, which is what Israel did through their whole existence. Israel made promises to God. They would tell, God would say, if you will do this, if you will listen to me, I will make you a special people. And Israel would say, okay, God, you can make us a special people. We're going to help you. We're going to do this. And uh, you've heard me say this before, that whoever makes the promises to, to whoever makes a promise has to provide, provide their own righteousness. If Israel makes the promise, they, make, they have to provide the righteousness. If God makes the promise, God provides the righteousness. So, Israel had to provide their own righteousness, which is old covenant thinking. They're going to get to God in their own way. Whether we're, instead of allowing God to do the work, we allow God to, uh, to do the work. If you, if you look at uh, Peter, what he's trying to tell the Lord is that, you know, I can do this myself. His pride, his human pride, his prejudice, his ego says, you know, there's no way I'm going to turn my back on you. And he, brought, and he meant it. And, and we do the same thing. We say things, and Mrs. White says in her words, she says, our promises are like ropes of sand. We need to be careful making promises to God. Mm -hmm. The human agent has rarely kept their promises to God. Now, Peter, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he, when Jesus, they came in, they took Jesus, the soldiers took Jesus, and they took him. And that same night, Jesus had told Peter before, he says, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter says, no, I'm not going to deny you. Well, it comes to find out, I mean, in the scripture tells us that uh, the last time Peter denied Jesus twice, but the last time he denied him with cursing. He says, I don't know the man. And, and Jesus had told him before that that he would hear the the cop crowed twice and after he denied him the third time. And it said that Peter went out and wept bitterly because he, had re he realized that what Jesus had said had just came through. But, you know, Jesus tried to warn them in the garden. And uh, let's go to the garden. Um, let's go to Matthew chapter 26. Up. 
Let's go to Mark 14, 32 to 38. I'm moving a little slower this week than I did last time I was up here. I was kind of ripping through the through the scriptures like uh, a little quick, and people were trying to write down the uh, scripture verses. Everybody at Mark fourteen thirty two to thirty eight. Pages turning, I'm assuming everybody's there. Then came, a, then they came to a place where, place which named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, "Sit here while I pray." And he took Peter, James, and John with him, and he began to be troubled deeply and distressed. Then he said, "My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death." Stay here and watch. He went a little further, fell on the ground, and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. <clears throat> you know, I never really thought about that until recent years, that Jesus had his own will. Jesus had his, he was his own person. And he wanted, he was asking the Father, he says, Father, he says, I don't, I, I'd rather not go through this. And he says, but not, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. So Jesus says in the next verse, and he said, Abba. And by the way, that word Abba is a word from, it's an Aramaic word. And it's, a, it's an endearing term. That word Abba, if you look it up, it's an endearing term. Go to the, go to the encyclopedias. Go to the internet. That word Abba, it stands, it's like a child talking to its, its dad and the, and the little child. And, and if you don't think God doesn't love you more than a dad loves his little baby, then he loves us more than we, than we understand. He loves us more. He loves us to the point that he came and, and died on the cross. I, you can't think of it. And our hearts should cry out. To this God of ours who loves us so much. As a baby cried out to his father. Daddy. That word. Look it up. Go to the, go to the internet. Look it up. That's what it means. Daddy. Abba. It's an endearing term. Take this cup from me, nevertheless, not that I will, but what you will. So Jesus is telling his father, you know, okay, dad, I'm not going to uh, do my will. I'm going to give you my will, and I'm going to do what? Because what was Jesus actually doing? Jesus was looking down through the portals of time. And he was looking in the past at everyone who had looked forward to him. And then he's looking forward to us. Saying, I love them. I'm going to the cross for them. Then he came and he found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch for one hour? Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. God knew how weak our flesh would be. If, if, if one of them could have hung on, Jesus would have been able to say, well, all of you are going to deny me except for that one person. If one person could have hung on in the garden and prayed, what did Jesus say? Pray, lest you fall into temptation. What did they do? They fell asleep. <laughs> Again, he went away and prayed and spoke the same words. And when he returned, he found them again, asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. Then he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough 
The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Let's go to today's scripture verse, John 21, 15 to 17. We talked about Peter's denial. And when Jesus was resurrected, and the ladies had came to the tomb, tomb, and Peter, remember Peter, the last we heard from Peter was he was crying bitterly. He knew that God had... had and, and that was one of the things about uh, Israel. They had portrayed God as a mean, exacting God. That He was not as loving as Jesus portrayed Him to be. That they, that the, the, the scribes, when they were pinning down the New Testament, they were so scared of God, and to write his, even write His name, they had a, a separate pencil they would grab and write His name because they were so scared to write, even write his name. Can you imagine? Is this, is this the God we serve? No, this is, what, this is what Israel has portrayed to the world. An exacting God. Somebody that would burn someone forever for, for the eons of time. That's what you hear on the streets. That God, I would not serve a God who would torture somebody forever and ever and ever. That may, it just... When we say God is love, that's not one of His attributes. God's attributes stem from His love. You're going to be... God's mercy will not let you... Sin will not be forever. It's going to be destroyed one day. Amen. It'll be burned up. Amen. Amen. So it's it's foreign to God to destroy one of His creatures. And, he, and so far, He's not destroyed anybody. They have died the first death, but there's a second death coming. Amen. That's right. If you read Scripture, the second death is what Jesus died. And, 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 and let's go to, to, to the Scripture verse. John chapter 21, verse 15 to 17. Now, the, in the English language, we have one word. We use this one word for love. And it, it, it has caused a problem with Scripture. And if you read what the, the Scripture reading today, as Diana read it, it says, uh, So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon. Now, this is after the resurrection. And this is after Peter, Peter had wept bitterly. And he was, he was thinking like the Israel thinks. You know, I'm never going to be accepted by God again. But Jesus, at his resurrection, told the ladies that ran to the tomb. He says, go tell the disciples and tell Peter too that I have risen. See, Peter, I mean, Jesus understood human nature. I mean, look at... Let's look at Judas. Talk about sin in the camp. That was going to be the name of my sermon, but I decided eh, I don't, I'm not going to go there. But Judas was a betrayer of Jesus. Jesus wooed Judas. Judas. He washed his feet. He, 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 he treated him like he treated the rest of the disciples. Why? Because Jesus made the statement, love your enemies, how can you love your enemies? In, a, in, in our human love, our phileo love, we cannot agape love. Now, phileo love, and we're fixing to get into that. Okay, it says, uh, Simon, son of Jonah, do you agape me more than these? And I'm paraphrasing here because it says... Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me 
Well, that word love, if you look in the Greek, it is translated agape, which is a godly love. Only God has this agape love. No human being has it unless God has instilled it. God pours this agape into us. And the only way we can love our enemies is if we have this agape. Agape love is others-centered. And if you look at our God, who is others-centered, our God is a triune God. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Is Gary. I just want to see, since you're here, I wanted to, I read a thing the other day that the best gift of the Holy Spirit is agape love. Amen. Now, if you look at our triune God, He can never be self-centered because He's got the Son, the Father has the Son, and they have the Holy Spirit. There's a, there's a triangle there. They love each other. If you have a solitary God, how can you have that? You can't. We don't have a solitary. We have a, a, a Godhead, you might say. So this Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, wants to pour their love into human beings so that we can have a relationship forever. Without this love being poured into you, you cannot love your enemy. You can, you, you can treat your enemy humane. You can treat anybody humane, but you can't be other-centered without the agape of God. And this is what Jesus is going through with Peter right now. He says, Son of Jonah, do you agape me more than these? You can't see that when you just read the word love. It says, He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I... Phileo you. It says, you know that, Peter's saying, you know that I love you. Well, that phileo is a, is a brotherly love. Peter understands because he knew what agape was because he had denied agape. Remember? Mm -hmm. Peter says to, to Jesus, I agape you. And, 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 and Jesus says, no, you're going to deny me three times. You don't understand what you're saying, Peter. Now, he comes to this point of their relationship. And, and, and Peter understands now, I phileo you. I brotherly love you. And he says, feed my lambs. This is Jesus saying, feed my lambs. Flesh. Flesh. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you, uh, do you agape me? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know I phileo you. So this exchange is going on. And, and you don't understand the exchange if you just read the English language. And, and, he, and he goes on and he says, He said to him a third time, Simon, and Jesus, Jesus said the first two times, Do you agape me? Well, the third time Jesus asked him, Do you phileo me? Do you brotherly love me? And Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you Phileo me. Do you brotherly love me? And Jesus understands now that Peter understands that he has no agape within him. That he understands that he could, in his humanness, in his old covenant self, deny him. Peter understands this. Peter knows that he doesn't have it within him to love him. And this is what the scriptures are saying to us, to us today that we don't have it in us. It's not in us to love God. Let's go to Romans chapter 5. And these things that I'm saying, you, 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 you've got to learn these things for yourself. You can't take my word for it. I can, I can tell you anything up here, and it sounds good, but you have to take it from, from here to here. Mm -hmm. And there's a saying that this is the foot that defeats. It, it doesn't go from here to here. You, and the only way it can go from here to here is for you to get into these things yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, you're going to have to take my word for the next, what I'm going to say next, but, and it's okay. You, you, you develop your own 
attitudes of study and your own uh, beliefs and about scriptures. But Romans chapter 5, if you read, I told you that this is the most perfect gospel. This is according to Martin Luther. And he's not God. I mean, he, this is the most perfect gospel. Well, if this is the most per perfect gospel in all of Scripture, then it must, it's pretty important to this Bible. Well, if you go to chapter 5, this is the most important, this is my opinion, the most important chapter in all of, all of Romans. <laughs> to me, it's the most important chapter in all of Scripture. Romans chapter 5. Just remember this. And it starts out, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we had peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The first blessing of justification by faith, that means we believe what God has done for us. That He has justified us. That He, that word justification, you can say, just as I have never sinned. That's how God treats each one of us now. God treats the human race because we were put in Jesus before we were in Adam. And then when Jesus came at the incarnation, the human race was put into Jesus. We are more better off, if I said, well, that's not, the English is poor there, but we are better off, more better, than if we had never sinned and we were still in Adam. We are better off now because we are in Jesus, in Jesus Christ. Righteousness, and I'm not paraphrasing this, this definition, righteousness is uh, someone who has been exposed to sin and has overcome. Amen. We, Jesus has been exposed to sin and has overcome. God the Father has not been exposed to sin and overcome. But Jesus says that rare righteousness because He has been in this flesh and overcome sin. And He is inviting us to be overcomers also. But He's telling us in John 15, 5, you can do nothing without Me. We have been invited to be children of God. Child, children, not slaves of God. We've been invited to sit on the throne with God. Amen. God loves us. Amen. With a, with, 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 like I said, He loves us so much that He decided to send His Son who went to the cross willingly. He's asking God, please don't make me do this. I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do Your will because I love them and I love You, Father. And he goes to the cross knowing how detestable sin is to the Father. And this is love. Knowing how detestable sin is to Jesus does not understand that he can't, he can't see through the portals of the tomb. He said, what does he say? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We don't understand that. He understood it. And he couldn't see. He says, I'm going to die. He says, I'm never going to be resurrected. He's thinking. I mean, he's broken. He, he knows before, I, I believe he knows before the cross that he's coming back. But when the sin is poured out and the darkness hits him, the, there, the darkness is the sin. It's, it's dark for three hours. The only way we can have an unshakable faith is to invite Jesus into our lives. We cannot make it without Jesus. And that's my prayer for each one of you. Is that you invite Jesus into your life. If He's not already there, invite Him. 
It's a simple invitation. Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. Jesus is pursuing every human being. But does that mean that every human being